Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add your own logo to an interactive 3D t shirt like this. Now, I am going to be using the paid version of Spline, so it might be required for you to purchase Spline in order to follow this tutorial completely. So, let me just jump into Spline and show you how easy it is to set this up. The good thing about this tutorial is that Spline already has this 3D model of a t shirt inside their system, so you don't have to worry about modeling or importing anything. So what you're going to want to do is go over into library right here and where this button right here says apparel, you can see they have a whole different, a whole bunch of different things that you can add your logo to. So in this case, let's just click on the very first one is a t-shirt body male dark. So if you want to use the female one, you can click on that one. But in this tutorial, let's just go ahead and use the male one. So as you can see, when you import it, like I said, they have everything in here already. So they have three directional lights right here. They have your model and then inside the model you're going to see when you click that if you go over into the materials over here on the right side this is where they have your image for your logo and all of that but let's go ahead and first let's just change a few different things uh, and then we can change out the image last so the first thing is if you don't want to have a dark background with a dark shirt you can always change that up so let's go ahead and add like a light gray and then maybe like a different color shirt right here and then I'll show you how to change out the logo so what you could do is just click out in the middle of nowhere you can just click right here and on the right side where it says BG color let's go ahead and just change that to something a little bit lighter so depending on where you're gonna put this you might want to have a lighter color background so in this case let's just do something like that and that looks okay to me right there now let's go ahead and change some of these directional lights so as you can see when you rotate it it's changing the color of the shirt and that's because this these two backlights right here you can see where it says light by default they have these two different colors behind it and then in the front they have like a white color so let's go ahead and just change them all to like a white color rather than having it change but you know depending on your use case you might want to have it where it does change colors but let's keep this really simple and underneath color we're just changing that to white and you can see right here if you select this front directional light you see where it says intensity 0.7 that's not too bad maybe we can even go to like let's just keep everything really simple like a one but then when you rotate the shirt you see how it's kind of get blown out right back here that's because they're adding like a lot of backlight right here so it might work for certain colors but let's go ahead and like i said let's keep this really simple and instead of having an intensity of 10 just change that to one and now you can see it's much more subtle it's not so washed out so let's go ahead and change the other one to a one so all of our directional lights have an intensity of one in this white color. So, so far this looks pretty good. And if we go to front view, that's what it's gonna look like. Now let's change the color of the shirt. So to do that, you just select the model and right underneath this layer where it says male t-shirt, you select that. And then, like I said, over here on the materials, this is where you have your image, the lighting and the color for the shirt. So if you just go underneath color, and now if you change this around, you can see it changes the color of the shirt. But let's go ahead and change this to 333333. So that's kind of like one of our branded colors. So it's like a light gray. So now when you do that, you can see that everything is looking good right here. It's kind of like, like I said, a lighter gray. Now we're going to jump into how we change out the image right here. So this is going to be the most important part of this tutorial. And I'm going to show you a cool little trick I like to do to make sure that when I import a logo like this, how to get the aspect ratio pretty close and then how to get it perfect. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So if I jump over into Photoshop, here's my uh, logo right here. And what I like to do is add a perfect square right here. So I'm making it a bright red. So what this is gonna do is give me the visual that I need to make sure that when I start to scale this down in the 3D model, that the aspect ratio is pretty close and then we can go into Photoshop, make sure it's perfect, and then we can resave this out. So what I recommend, like I said, add a square so you can visually see what's going on. Now what we're gonna do is if you click this box right here, we're gonna go into the image and upload the one I just showed you. Now you can see what I mean right here. The box is really kind of stretched out and doesn't look that great. The first thing I recommend we do is right here where it says 20, that's kind of like your uh, opacity. So we need to change that to 100. So let's go ahead and change that to 100. So now it's gonna bring in the pure white and you can see the red's really strong as well. And what you can do is just keep all of this by default. And then you can see right here, the scale is what's throwing off all of the stretching. So in most cases, unless your logo is a perfect square, 
you're going to have to do this little trick I'm showing you right here on how to get the aspect ratio. So what I like to do is underneath scale, I like to click and drag it down to about the width I would like the logo to appear. So you could also type this in. So something like 160 might be good. And as you can see right here, the red box is completely stretched out. So what we need to do is now use the Y coordinates and stretch that down. So it looks like it's pretty close to a perfect square. Um, this step doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go into Photoshop and just kind of make some tweaks. But it's a cool little trick I like to do. So let's go ahead and change that to like 100. And what I recommend is try to keep your scales like even numbers so you can see it's like 160 by 100. Um, don't go to like, you know, 159.7 and then do the Y at 99.65. Don't try not to do that. Go to an even number. It's going to make your life a lot easier. So now that we know that the scale is at 160 and 100, we can jump into Photoshop and then we can get rid of this red box and then make sure that this is 100% correct with the aspect ratio. So now we know that the scale is at 160 by 100. Um, this is a cool little trick I like to do. So if I'm in a tool like Photoshop, what I like to do is go to a new uh, document. So let me just type in 160 by 100. This is just kind of a reference. We're just getting a number, so you don't have to worry about this file. Then what you can do is go underneath your image size right here. And what we're gonna do is change the width to the width of the good image. This will all make sense in just a second. Um, so now if you go to the good image and you just want to copy this one right here. So our good logo is at 2475. So we don't want to increase or decrease that too much because then you might get pixelization. So now we can go back into here, change the image size to 2475. And you can see that the height is at 1547. So if I hit OK. This is what the new logo dimension should be. So if we go into here, just copy this one where it says 1547. Go into your good logo, go underneath your canvas size right here, and you just paste that right into the height. And what this is going to do, if you keep this anchor in the middle, it's just gonna add space above and below those extra pixels so you know that the dimensions and the aspect ratio are gonna be correct. So now if I do that, that's going to be your new size. So now what we can do is remove that red box and save this out as another PNG. And then when we import this into Spline, it will be rendered out correctly. And if you just go ahead and click the Upload Image button, and then you import the new one we just created, you can see right here the red box is now gone. And if you scale around right here, zoom in, you can see that the aspect ratio is correct. And you can see it's kind of wrapping around the shirt. So everything is looking good right here. And if you want to change the position up and down, that's really easy to do. So if you go into your image and where it says offset, you can always just go ahead and move the uh, Y coordinates right here. And you can see that it will start to follow the mesh on side the t-shirt. So depending on where you want it, you can go ahead and just do that right here. Something along those lines. And that's it. That's how easy it is to add a logo. And if you have a situation where you need it to the back, they have this button right here where you can do back. Uh, but if you do happen to choose the back, you're going to go ahead and do like a flip inside Photoshop because it's kind of like inverting it. So in this case, let's just do the front. And now I'm going to show you how easy it is to make it where the user can only uh, pan left and right and they can't really like zoom in or anything like that. So let me show you how easy it is to control those settings inside the export. What I recommend before you go into the export settings is just go ahead and right click inside anywhere out here and just hit reset camera. And what that's going to do is just bring you to the front view and what's going to pick up the camera from this angle. So if you like this position right here is good. Now you can click the export button and they give you all the different options inside here, of course. But if you go underneath your place settings, we can go ahead and just enable a few different things. So you probably want to do the background color if you changed it. Um, and then underneath orbit, we can keep this on. Pan, no. You can keep zoom on if you want. Soft orbit, no. And then you can have your touch settings right here. You can do like disable for the pan. So this is like on a mobile device. Now let's go ahead into your orbit limits. 
And if we just want to select horizontal, that's going to make it where the users are going to only go 45 left and 45 right. So they're not going to be able to go like all the way around the t-shirt or up and down because you don't want to have it where the user can, in this situation, go and move around the whole um, model. And then if you want to have a little bit of a zoom limit, you can always do that. So you want to probably start at something like 100 so the user can't zoom lower than that. And then maybe just small amount, maybe like 125, they can go up. So now if you hit the play button, this is what it's going to look like. So I'm clicking and dragging. So the user is going to be able to go left and right. They can't go up and down. And then with the wheel, they can zoom out a little bit and that's about it. So they can zoom in, out, zoom out. That's about it. So that's it for this tutorial on how you can add your own custom uh, logo to a t-shirt inside Spline. If you like videos like this, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.